Amen. And, and welcome to Concord Baptist Church, what there is of it. Amen. My goodness. We could have... No, never mind. <laughs> but, all right. Any special prayer requests besides Brother Steve? Huh? Leave my tie alone. I mean, you know, it's my tie. If I want... Can I be crooked? Preachers and politicians are anyway, you know. All right. Any other prayer requests? Just kids. Kids? Yeah. Ash and Alex? Yeah. All right. Brother Raj? Yeah. Brother Dave when he gets his shot? Yes. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> I can. What's he getting? COVID shot. He wants to get his COVID shot. He can't wait till his comes. Where's he going? It ain't coming yet. I'm in part 1C. That'd be 60 and above. In April, Linda can get right in front of the line. But uh, in April, you can get right in front of the line. I know. Doctor told her if she got that stuff, she'd be in trouble. But anyway, continue to pray for her. She's not healed all the way yet, but she's... Uh, She's made arrangements to try to make it here tonight and hopefully stay in here. Amen. All right. We'll get uh, Brother Dave, if he would, to open us in a word of prayer. Amen. Lord, God, we say, Lord, we again thank you for this day, Lord God. It's been a good day, Lord God. And a lot of things got done today, Lord. And we thank you for that. And Father, we do pray for any of the ones that are coming. You'll give them traveling mercies. Get them here. Safe and whole, Lord God. And Father, we have a lot of prayer requests. Uh, we have members that are out, and Brother Steve with the with the operation, and uh, of course Brother Raj in the in the facility. And Father, we uh, we got uh, Sister Linda here tonight, and that's a an answer to prayer that she's feeling good enough she can get here. And we have others that uh, that we pray for all the time. We have family members we we pray for, Lord, and. Um, for uh, Sister Teresa's uh, grandkids and our Lord and Father, there's a lot of prayer out that we that we need for a lot of different people for a lot of different situations, Lord God. And Father, we do pray, Lord God, that uh, you're attentive to our prayers, Lord, and that you're hearing our prayers, Lord. And if it be your will and your way, Lord God, to, to answer our prayers, Lord, uh, Lord, it, it'd be a blessing and encouragement to us, Lord God. And, Father, you are a God of miracles, Lord. And yeah, amen. Father, we, we need some miracles here in these last days here to encourage uh, the remnant what's left, Lord God, because uh, we have a wicked world, Lord, that doesn't believe in you, Lord. And Father, the ones that uh, think they believe are, are as lost as uh, as a Hogan's goat, Lord. And Father, we, we do pray, Lord God, that uh, you will help us and answer our prayers, Lord, encourage us. Strengthen us and keep us going, Lord. And Father, where we pray for the for the uh, pastor and the message he's got for us, Lord God, that uh, it's the one that we need tonight, Lord, to, to help us and carry us, Lord. And with everybody on uh, Facebook when they're, that's watching, Lord, that uh, that they need, Lord, and help and strengthen us, encourage us in here in these last days. And we we'll thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, something I had on my mind, but lately it just slips. Bing, gone. Amen. But, uh, oh, I haven't been able to get a hold of Brother Travis in weeks. Uh, trying to check on him and stuff, so pray for him. Have you heard anything from him? He's his phone. He's not answering his phone or anything, so I don't know. But, uh. Anyway, pray for him and uh, pray for Brother Radish. Brother Radish, he calls uh, some nights, like it was the last night he was on, he calls on the phone and listens to the the uh, message. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, the lady in Augusta where Tommy's working, she's got the COVID now, right? And uh, another guy. Out today, they think he can take testing in. So, there's about five of them there already. 
not counting their families, because one of them, all of those people caught it from the boss man. The other boss, and the other place he goes out partying, and you know, he brought it into work, and everybody in the whole company got shut down. Hydra uh, hose power. Uh, everyone over there in Columbia had it. They had to shut the plant, their shop down for a, for a couple days. And uh, they said Diatra, she's the girl that runs the seals and everything over there, said she's having a real rough time. So, uh, and then, of course, Mr. Miller's, one of our customers' father died. And uh, a lot of others. But I tell you what, I had a 30-pound hunk of beef and uh, been making the girls work. I cut, I don't know, about four chuck roasts that thick, that big around out of it, and uh, cut up some stew beef, and then one little roast, and uh, we ground up some hamburger. I'm going to tell you what, that was the best hamburger. You bet? And uh, vacuum sealed that stuff. Uh, that's I, I love doing it myself because you know what you're getting when you do it. I mean, you don't know what you're getting in the grocery store. But I was talking to Pastor Cunningham last night. And he called and he said uh, he tried gardening one year. And he said uh, from now on he does all his gardening at the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> it does take some work. Amen. All right, girls. and everything and uh we got to talking and i said 
we must have messed up here or something because they had a gallon of the stuff and a gallon of hardener. And they said this stuff was real tough and it looked a lot better. So I don't know if they didn't give me the hardener or, or what, but we might have to redo this again. Yeah, they said you mix it. Yeah, you mix it. It's a hardener that goes into the epoxy paint. But I, I need to look at the can and see what it says. And I, I'm not happy with this. It's a color anyway. <laughs> All right, let's stand and turn to 198. There's power in the blood. You can't play that one? All right, which one can you play? Quickly, quickly. Quick. 500. 500. When the roll is called up yonder. You heard a car door slam? There it is. There it is. Oh. Okay. Here, come lead this song. Five hundred when the roll is called up yonder. Where's Russ? Uh, so mom and they got company at the house. Oh. That's why I'm like, keep the having help that get dinner ready for the company. Oh. Okay, good evening, Concord Best Church. Sorry I'm late, I apologize. Yeah, laugh it up. Alright, you ready to start? Chi? No, I call her Keo. Keo. Is he related to you? Uh, yeah, she, he, she is, but him, and he's a, he's a total no case. Speaking English. She is, she lives in my house. Him? He's a, he's a, they are related. No case. I'm not, I'm a no case. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, son, but good to have you here. Hey, man. 
All right. Tomorrow night, pizza pie. It's something simple because I got a, other things to do and I, I won't be able to uh, waste a bunch of time trying to cook and everything. So, and Sister Teresa did it last week. So, we'll just uh, do pizza pies. Uh, they're too expensive. I like Caesars. <laughs> Man, we're spending 80, 100 bucks a week. So, uh, anyway, we, we got to, we got to lower it somewhere. Amen. So, all right. Oh, Mr. Simpson. How do you do, sir? Amen. She's waiting for you to get in. All right. Johnny was, wasn't coming on Wednesday nights lately because it's cold. But it done warmed up and he still ain't here. Huh? Yeah, because it rained last night. I was out for sleep because I was like, uh-huh. All right, turn to the book of Philemon. We're going to look at the little book of Philemon. You need a Bible? Yeah. Watch it, don't touch it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I know. You're worshiping the spirit, Johnny. We need you here. We didn't have you here to help us sing. <laughs> Richard has a prayer request um, for Tory Fox. For Tory Fox, I don't know what's wrong. Richard. Dow. Richard Dow. Oh. Tommy, pray for Richard's request. Uh, Vic, what's the name? Tory Dow. Fox. Tory Fox. Tory Fox. Um, just special prayer request. The Lord knows what the issue is. So if you would pray for. Oh, for Tory? Yeah. That's his name. Oh, Richard asked for special prayer. Grace Father, we want to lift up Tory to you tonight, Lord. You know the situation. Yeah, Lord. Lord but you know what's going on in her life, Lord. And I just pray that you will intervene in a situation and, you know, clear up her mind, Lord, whatever it takes, Lord. But, Lord, I just. I just want to lift her up again to you, Lord, because you know, like I said, you know the situation and, and you can change her life, Lord, if she accepts it. And Lord, so I just pray for her I hold the person there, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask this time. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm gonna read you this opening here by uh, Mr. C. I. Schofield. The book of Philemon, the epistle of Paul the Apostle to Philemon. The writer is the Apostle Paul. They say the date is probably A.D. 64. It is one of the prison epistles. Uh, the theme is Onesimus, profitable, a slave of Philemon. A Christian of Colossae had robbed his master and fled to Rome. There he became a convert through Paul, who sent him back to Philemon with this letter. It is a priceless value as a teaching, number one, in practical righteousness, number two, in Christian brotherhood, three, in Christian courtesy, and four, in the law of love. The divisions are four. The first one is greeting, the second one, the character of Philemon, the third one is the intercession for Onesimus, and number four is salutations and conclusion. And, uh, he was a slave, so we'll just read the letter that Paul was sending back to, to uh, Philemon. Amen. Beginning in verse 1, it says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow labor, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing 
which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee, that which is convenient. He said, yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such and one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He said, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, who I have begotten in my bonds. So Paul says he won him to the Lord while he was in his bonds. Amen. Onesimus, you know, slavery was not wrong in the Bible. The sin was men stealing. Amen. And so you'll see that in here as we're reading this through here. You know, Paul says, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. This here, you can relate that to us before we were saved. We were unprofitable to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We were slaves to sin. And uh, we went our own way, did our own thing. No regard for what God did for us. But he says, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is mine own bowels. Whom I would have retained with me that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. Paul said, hey, you'd have been profitable for me. I could have used him here for him to minister to me, you know, being Paul the aged. <clears throat> but without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. He didn't tell him to release him as a slave, but he told him to receive him as a brother also. Amen. He said, if thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. Now you think about how that relates to our salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ when he shed his blood for us. And you could take this letter as uh, the Lord writing it to God the Father. Amen. Here we were in a sin and running away. And here he is offering intercession to God the Father for us. Amen. Paul says, I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it. Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. <laughs> He's sure to throw that part in. Amen. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But withal, prepare me a, also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. There salute thee, Ephesus, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. You know, later on in, over in Timothy, you know, he says that Demas has forsaken me. Here, Demas was working, still laboring. What causes people to forsake the Lord and leave the flesh? Remember at one time, Mark was unprofitable. But he says, bring Mark, he's profitable to me now. How profitable are we to the Lord? Have you examined yourself? Have you ever looked at yourself to see where you stand with the Lord or what you think he might think of you? Now, I know that God the Father only sees Jesus Christ when he sees us. He sees the blood. But what does the Lord Jesus Christ see of you and I? You remember that the Bible says that we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the deeds we did in our body, whether it be good or bad. So what does the Lord Jesus Christ think of us? You know, he says, if it, it, why call ye me Lord and do not the things that I command thee? You see, the Bible says, and forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. You see, what is it that, you know, be honest with you, tonight I'd have rather laid home. 
Really, I'm just being serious. I mean, my old body, my old flesh, man, it, it just soon stay at the house. But would that be pleasing to the Lord? You see, we we got to look at it the way the Lord looks at it. We didn't think enough of him to be here. And that goes for anybody out there, too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Seriously. It's, uh, you know, we show up when we don't feel like it. Why? I mean, I just don't understand why Brother Steve isn't here tonight. I really don't. I mean... Just because he had surgery and knee replacement today, I mean, is that any excuse? <laughs> I'm only kidding. You know that. <laughs> oh, Grace, was, she got his look at first like, is he nuts or what? <laughs> or what? Yeah, or what? <laughs> Amen. I'm glad he got it done. Hopefully it'll uh, be a big help to him. Amen. 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 He won't be so honorary and mean. <laughs> All right. But have you looked at yourself? Have you looked to see? I'm looking for another passage here. Uh, have you looked to see if you are pleasing the Lord? Is he approve of, of you? Does he approve of the way you act? Does he approve of? Your loyalty to him. Amen. Amen. Paul does say examine yourselves. See if you be of faith. I was looking for a passage here. If I could find it. Oh, I know where it is. I'm in the wrong one. You know what? I, I don't think that people really, really believe that they're going to give an account to God. Did, yeah. Oba, was it Oba Lyle? Did, did, did he write this letter? Was Onesimus? Yeah. Well, I didn't look at the end, but sometimes it, Paul, Paul wrote the letter, but he had somebody else pen it sometimes. You know, he had someone else pen it. But he Amen. was a slave, right? Onesimus. Yeah, I mean, it's probably he couldn't write. I don't know. I don't really know. Let me see what it says. By Ominous, a servant. So sent by a servant. If Onesimus wrote it, he was a uh, servant. educated yeah, yeah. Because it says right here in the bottom, as soon as you said amen, it says it right here, written from one, triple one, by him, a servant. By him, a servant. Yeah, because Paul had, they said later in life he had problems with his eyesight and stuff, and so other people would write the letter even though it was Paul's letter. You know, just like the word of God, God wrote the word, but man penned it. Amen. Uh, over in First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter eleven. In verse twenty three, it's talking about the Lord's table. Paul says here, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. Now, when we do the Lord's table, we do that. That's symbolically the bread and the, the wine or grape juice, whatever you're using. Amen. Uh, but in Catholicism, they literally believe that the priest can turn that into the literal flesh of Jesus Christ. And it's just like you taking a bite of flesh. Amen. And that you're literally drinking his blood. 
He says, verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Now, self-judgment, self-judgment. We haven't done the Lord's table in quite a while. It doesn't have a time, uh, how many times you do it a year or whatever. She says as often as you do it. We haven't done it in quite a while. Why? Because we're a small church and we can't afford to lose too many people. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> no. hey, and we'll read about that. He says, but let a man, verse 28, but let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. When I was growing up in church, my pastor told us to examine ourselves, and if you have any sin in your life, confess it and get it out. Amen? Amen. Before you do the Lord's table. Because if you're truly saved and you take it unworthily, you see what he said here? Some are sick. Others are dead, said some sleep. He didn't mean you went night night. He went, you expired. <laughs> Amen. You went bye-bye permanently. And uh, so he says, but let a man examine himself. Now, I've had people tell me, now this is the body of Christ, right? The whole, all church, it's one body. But if you're not part of this local assembly and you came in here and we were serving the Lord's table, they would say that you couldn't partake of it. They say, why? Because the preacher would say, because I don't know how you're living, but it's not him that's supposed to examine. Read it again. He says, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let a man examine himself. There's some people we've had in the service over the years that wouldn't take the, the communion. They wouldn't do it because evidently there was something in their life. They weren't sure this, that, or the other. But I don't know. I might see you outwardly, but do I really know how you live at home? No. Do I know what's in your heart? No. No. So how can I judge you on it? <coughs> it's up to you. And you have to judge whether you're worthy enough to take it because you're the one that's going to suffer the consequences. Amen. I don't know how these doctrines get started. But it'll mess you up. For he that eateth, verse 29 again, and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Them that are within, we judge. Them that are in, God judges. Amen. With in the church, as far as the church is concerned, them that are without God judges. Amen. But if you're in here and you take it unworthily, God's going to judge that. And like I said, I don't know your secret sins. I don't know your secret faults. I don't know what you've done today or yesterday or what you're going to do tomorrow. So you have to be the one to examine yourself. So if somebody was to come in from another church, and we were holding communion, I'd let them partake of it. Amen. Because he says, one body. We're one body in Christ Jesus. Now, I know the local church is indigenous and it's of its own. It's not a, like the Southern Baptist or anything. But still, as the body of Christ, we're all one. And he says, wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, 
carry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Boy, I used to hate it in the morning when we come in to do the Lord's table and I hadn't ate breakfast or nothing and they passed the crackers around and the Jews, <laughs> hey, can I get another one? <laughs> Amen. That's <laughs> sad. He said that ye come not together unto condemnation and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. So you have to self-judge yourself. We look back at Onesimus. Evidently, something Paul said to him, let him see what he was. I'm sure he didn't really care much for slavery, but once he was saved, became a servant of the Lord, he was willing to go back. Amen. But Paul also wrote a letter there and told him, hey, treat him as me. If he owes you anything, put it on my account. Do you judge yourself? I look at myself daily. You know why? Because he said if we judge ourselves, we'll be not judged. Amen. I wear 1 John 1, 9 out. I figure that. <laughs> I'm going to set a mouse trap for that little mouse that keeps making noises during services. <laughs> so what about you are you are you good with the lord are you clear because probably april is when we'll do the communion so that gives you plenty of time to examine yourself get the mess out of your life whatever you've got whatever you have <laughs> They've been, they have been getting on me about my grammar. grammar. Amen. It ain't good. <laughs> but that's all I have for you tonight. I wanted to do that little book of Onesimus and look at ourselves and prepare you for April. Amen. And if I'm alive and I'm here, that's what we'll be doing. Hey, Amen. Ma'am. A lady on here named Ingrid Risinger Corkman asked us to pray for her, the schools and the students. Pray for the schools and the students. And the teachers today. Yeah, yeah and our teachers. Hey, Amen. So we'll let Mr. Simpson do that. Most gracious Heavenly Father, once again we find ourselves here on a beautiful Wednesday evening, Lord. We ask uh, that you look down and give a hand up to all of our students out there and Ingrid and everybody that's in the school system that, yeah, they, amen. that they, uh, they receive the benefits and all of the joys of, of being in the church with Christ and if, if we reach down and Give them all an opportunity to stay healthy and move forward and lead to see them uh, in your life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for tuning in. God bless. Have a good evening. Thanks for you folks that came. Amen. And uh, next time you come, bring food. <laughs>